So I think everyone loves a good iteration of a trigonometric function. And today we're going to look at an inequality involving the iterations of sine and cosine. This is a super famous inequality that was on a Russian math Olympiad in 1995. It's also described in the following math.stackexchange post. And so this inequality is in fact true for all real numbers x. Although to prove it, you only need to show this is true for real numbers between 0 and 2 pi given the periodicity of sine and cosine. That being said, for illustrative purposes, we'll only focus on x between 0 and pi over 2. When x is between pi and 2 pi, this is quite easy given the SIGN of sine and cosine. And then when x is between pi over 2 and pi, well, you can look at this post if you'd like to see that result, or you could maybe work it out for yourself being inspired by what we're about to do. Okay, so what exactly are we going to prove in this video today? So we'll show that for x between 0 and pi over 2, we have sine of sine of sine of sine of x is less than cosine of cosine of cosine of cosine of x. And in fact, I've done a maybe related video where I showed that n iterations of sine tends towards zero. And so maybe that would be a good video to watch after this one if you're psyched. So before we get started, I'd like to look at some basic facts. And that is on the interval from zero to pi over two, the cosine function is decreasing and the sine function is increasing. And we won't prove that, but I will note that the graphs look like this on this interval. So I've underlined cosine in yellow and the cosine graph is in yellow here. So let's recall cosine of zero is one and cosine of pi over two is zero versus this magenta graph, which is the sine graph is like almost the dual to that. So the sine of zero is zero and the sine of pi over two is one. Now let's recall that a decreasing function will reverse the order of an inequality. So if alpha and beta are between zero and pi over two and alpha is less than beta, then since alpha and beta are on this interval, when we apply cosine, the order of our inequality will switch. So cosine of alpha will be bigger than cosine of beta. But sine of alpha will be less than sine of beta. That's because sine is increasing there. So just to reiterate, increasing functions will maintain the direction of an inequality, whereas decreasing functions will reverse the direction of an inequality. Okay, so let's get to it. And we're gonna start with an observation that doesn't seem like it's gonna help that much, but it really does. And maybe I'll prove that as a subclaim. So let's look at our claim. We will show that in fact, cosine of x plus sine of x is less than or equal to the square root of two. And this is gonna be true for all x between zero and pi over two. So we're on this interval. Okay, how could we prove this? Well, we're going to prove it with calculus, even though that's a bit of a cheat because for these math Olympiad type problems, you generally don't require calculus. But that being said, we're not in the contest right now. And I think probably most of you have seen calculus before. Okay, so let's maybe take a function f of x to be equal to cosine of x plus sine of x. And we'll take the domain to be on the closed interval 0 to pi over 2. Now, by the extreme value theorem, we know that since this is continuous on this closed interval, and it's differentiable on the corresponding open interval, then this function achieves its maximum and its minimum on that interval. Okay, so furthermore, we know that those extreme values occur at the endpoints or at the critical points. So let's find the critical points. So first of all, we need to recall what the critical points are, and those are places where the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. 
Of course, the derivative will exist everywhere here because this is differentiable. Okay, so let's take this derivative. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of sine is positive cosine. We need to set that equal to zero. That will tell us that sine of x is equal to cosine of x. But on the interval from zero to pi over two, that only occurs one place, and that is at pi over four. So we have a single critical point, which is pi over four. It's right in the middle there. And now look at my picture over here. You know, essentially they intersected exactly between zero and pi over two. Even though this was a really, really rough picture, we see this pi over four showing up over there. Okay, so now what we'll do is test our function at the critical points and the end points. So note that f evaluated at zero is equal to one. That's because we get cosine of zero, which is one, plus sine of zero is zero. We get f evaluated at pi over four is equal to root two over two plus root two over two, but that's equal to root two, which I'll just point out that is bigger than one. And that's because cosine and sine have the same value there, and that value is one over root two or the square root of two over two. And then finally, f evaluated at pi over two is also equal to one. And that's because sine is one there, while as cosine is zero. So that means we could actually put a one on this side. Then I'd like to point out that these two will be our minimums, whereas this root two will be our maximum. So now let's maybe change this word claim to a fact and let's see where that takes us. So we just got done showing that cosine plus sine is between one and square root of two. Now we somehow wanna mold this into what will be helpful for repeated iterations of sine and cosine. And thinking a little bit, we'll come up with the following rule, which we hopefully remember from trigonometry class. And that is that the sine of pi over two minus theta is equal to the cosine of theta, whereas the cosine of pi over two minus theta is equal to the sine of theta. So these are like kind of shifting formulas that shift sine into cosine and cosine into sine. So these are fairly important and they'll be of a lot of use for our problem especially with these repeated iterations. So now how can we use this fact to motivate a manipulation of this inequality? Well, let's see if we can pin the square root of two below pi over two, but it's actually not that hard. I think pretty clearly the square root of two is less than one and a half, which is three halves. We can see that just by squaring both sides. If you square the square root of two, you get two. Two is equal to eight quarters. 8 quarters is less than 9 quarters, but 9 quarters is 3 over 2 squared. So that gives us our inequality. But then pi is bigger than 3. I think that's pretty clear, which means pi over 2 is bigger than 3 over 2. Okay, so now we'd like to focus on what we have just achieved, which is the inequality cosine x plus sine x is less than pi over two. So rewriting that, we'll have zero is less than or equal to the cosine of x, which is strictly less than pi over two minus the sine of x. And this is gonna be for all x between zero and pi over two. Okay, so this right-hand side of the inequality is what we just built, and this left-hand side of the inequality is just because cosine itself is always bigger than or equal to zero on this interval. And now, recall that we're iterating sines and cosines, so we'd like to apply cosine to both of these, maybe, or perhaps sine to both of these. But in order to get an idea of what happens, we'll need to find exactly where these objects live. And we can rewrite that as the following inclusion of intervals, which we'll talk through after we write down. So let's take this and note that the interval from cosine x to pi over two minus sine x is a subset 
of the interval from zero to pi over two. And this is for all x between zero and pi over two. Great, now how would you check that? Well, this follows from the very simple extension right here by putting a pi over two above pi over two minus sine of x. Given that sine of x is non-negative on this interval, so now that we've determined the interval from cosine to pi over two minus sine is between zero and pi over two, that tells us that on this interval right here, for all x between zero and pi over two, we know the cosine function is decreasing and the sine function is increasing. Okay, great. But now what we'll do is take cosine and sine and apply it to this inequality which we built earlier. So let's say cosine is happening via this blue arrow and sine is happening via this magenta arrow. So since cosine is decreasing here, it'll reverse the direction of the inequality. So that'll give us a new inequality, cosine of cosine of x is bigger than cosine of pi over two minus sine of x. But now we can apply this equation right here, this like link between cosine and sine to rewrite the right hand part of this as sine of sine of x. Notice it's exactly this formula right here where theta is equal to sine of x. Okay, good. But now let's apply sine, but since sine is increasing here, we will maintain the direction of the inequality. So that will give us sine of cosine of x is less than sine of pi halves minus sine of x. And now we'll use this top equation where theta is equal to, well again, pi over two minus sine of x. So that's gonna give us cosine of sine of x. Well, I think one thing is pretty interesting, and that is that we have our goal or a smaller version of our goal inequality right here, where we have two iterations of cosine and two iterations of sine instead of four. And we have a complementary version here where we've composed sine and cosine in a different order. Okay, so let's take these two inequalities and move on. So we just determined that sine evaluated at sine of x is less than cosine evaluated at cosine of x. But also this can be bound on the left by zero and bound on the right by pi over two using strategies like were similar to before. So I've noted that over here. Also this whole thing is between zero and pi halves. Furthermore, we showed that sine of cosine of x is less than cosine of sine of x. So that's our complementary inequality there. Okay, now where do we wanna go from here? Well, let's recall that cosine is decreasing on this interval. That gives us motivation that perhaps we should apply cosine to this first inequality. That'll give us a triple iteration of cosine on the right-hand side. So let's do that here. So let's say this green arrow is apply cosine to this whole thing. Again, since cosine is decreasing here, it will change the direction of the inequality. And that'll leave us with something like cosine of cosine of cosine of x is less than cosine of sine of sine of x. So again, I reverse the direction of the inequality. But now let's play a game kind of similar to what we did before. So here I'll just put also, and we'll look at the triple iteration of cosine plus the triple iteration of sine. So in other words, cosine of cosine of cosine of x plus sine of sine of sine of x. And what can we work with here? Well, perhaps we wanna leave this sine of sine of sine alone. And now let's use this inequality pinned inside of here. So we know cosine of cosine of x is bigger than sine of sine of x, but again, because cosine is decreasing, if we evaluate it at cosine, we'll get something larger. So that gives me the following. We'll have cosine of sine of sine of x plus 
sine of sine of sine of x. Okay, great. So again, we did that by exchanging this cosine of cosine with a sine of sine, but since it's inside of the cosine, we got the inequality going in the direction that's indicated on the board. But now let's note that we have something similar to what we had before. We have a cosine theta plus sine theta type object, which we bound above by pi over two very early on this whole process. So that means that this is less than pi over two. But now we can take out the middle and then write down what'll be a really helpful inequality, which is cosine of cosine of cosine of x is less than pi halves minus sine of sine of sine of x. Okay, good. So this is like a triple iteration version of that single iteration inequality that we've been building lots of stuff out of. And now finally we'll apply cosine one more time and use the fact that it's decreasing on the appropriate spot to really finish this thing off. So if we apply cosine to this left-hand side, we'll get the quadruple iteration of cosine. We have cosine of cosine of cosine of cosine of x has gotta be bigger than cosine of pi over two minus sine of sine of sine of x. Great. Then we can view this as cosine of pi over two minus theta, where theta is equal to this triple iteration of sine. So we can use that formula that we used a couple of times on the last board to exchange this outer cosine with the sine, and we'll have this is sine of sine of sine of sine of x. But now looking at this carefully for one last time, we see that our quadruple iteration of cosine is larger than our quadruple iteration of sine. But that's exactly what we wanted to do. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.